All right, ladies, I'd like you to meet an old buddy of mine. This is Don Forster. He's the scout for Portland. University? No, the Trailblazers. You remember them? Which one of us do you want? Your coach. With injured players, they're looking to your knee for help? What's wrong with that? Sort of like a drowning man calling for a rock, isn't it? You want it with free throws, huh? A real Rick Barry. Well, I guess I can always make room for a Rick Barry. What do you think of the new kid? I don't know. It's like when you're talking to him, you got to repeat everything twice. Maybe Mom was right about that special school. Can't say I didn't warn you, pal. You know, whoever said all NBA teams win at home ought to be shot. Most of them do, except when they play us. Oh, thanks, I can use that. Are you kidding me with what you knocked down scouting for Portland? Just an humble working man, that's all. Forrester, if I had your money, I'd burn mine. Hope I didn't hang you up for a late date or anything, but take you into the locker room? I don't know. But if you had, she would have understood the nostalgic pangs of an old ball player. Well, in that case, how about a couple of, uh... Why set limits? These. It's canned goods, I think. Oh, on the counter's fine. Honestly, I thought we'd have more time to get moved in. <clears throat> Watch it. Hey, fast hands. It's the only one I've got. Well, someday you'll have plenty. More than you know what to do with. Where's Jeff? Oh, in his room, I think. Hey, I need a hand. I know. In a minute. Hi, son. Oh, hi there. What do you say we uh, try the hoop? Sure, whatever you say. Okay, come on. Shall I pass the salt or will you leave the plate? I'll leave it. You want your fries? Help yourself, my friend. Go. So, uh, you happy with the new season? We look pretty good tonight, huh? On paper, we ought to be right there in the thick of things. Don. It's me. Now spare me the company line, will you? This is not a press conference. You already got two starters who are out with injuries at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess as soon as this kid... Uh... Richie Debs. Debs, yeah. Well, as soon as you get him back in the fold... Well, we won't get him back in the fold, not for a little while. Why not? In the press, it says he's ready to sign. Forget what it says in the paper. He has his figure, we have our figure. And from the look of things, he, or rather his agent, isn't going to move one plug nickel. Well, you can kiss your season goodbye. Mm, not Harley. He'll come around eventually. But until he does, we're just going to be a little hard pressed. That's all. That's too bad. Oh, the money you guys could have made in the playoffs. How much does a team bring in from home playoffs? What, two hundred grand? Something like that. Why do you players always think in terms of money? Where do you where do you get an idea like that? From management. Well, there's more to it than that. There's well, pride for one thing, mm -hmm. and the fans are going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Now, those people are used to a winner. Oh yeah. You guys won the championship one year in a row. Mm -hmm. That was two years ago. You had a real dynasty going. Only six seconds left. Let's go. Jeff, come on inside. It's late. You have to get up early for school. Okay, Mom. Hey, 
Hey, hey, Jeff, 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 wait a minute. Hey, wait, let's practice that shot a few more. Jeff, get back out of here. Why do you always yell at him? You know it doesn't do any good. Because it does me good. You know what it's like for a rookie. He comes fresh out of college, never played more than 25 games in a year. We're playing nearly 80. All right, so he's gotten through his freshman and sophomore season. Now he's got his junior year to go. So, uh, how's he taking it? The kid's exhausted. He dropped 16 pounds since we started training. He's just not used to it. Now, you never get used to it. You just stop complaining about it. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know that traveling is what kills you. I used to wake up sometimes, I'd have to call the room clerk to find out what city I was in. You ought to see some of the places I have to go to scout talent. At least you got to go to all the hot spots. New York, L.A., Boston. Milwaukee, Cleveland, Buffalo. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. But you finally got out of the rat race, right? Hmm. Tell me something. How's the coaching thing? Our team hmm. loses on the road and at home. We're the only team in the league with a note court advantage. Mm -hmm. We're getting there. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got fast hands. If I knew you were paying, I would have bought a steak, extra fries. Right. How long are you going to be in town? Uh, a few more days, I think. I have a little uh, shopping to do. Why don't you come out by the school? Maybe I can sell you a forward. You might just do that. How's your knee? Well, it's better than it was a year ago and worse than it was two years ago. I guess it's coming along. Miss it? Oh, not really. I don't think so. I like what I'm doing, and it almost pays the rent. At least it's still basketball. Mm-hmm. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Couldn't you forget that stupid game for one night? You know he had to get his things ready for school. We aren't even unpacked yet. He was getting ready. And basketball is as much a part of his schooling as anything else, and don't you forget it. Forget? How can I forget? That's why you dragged us here, isn't it? Ever since you saw that story on TV about Reed, you... Reeves! Kenny Reeves. Reeves, Reed, what's the difference? Carl, we had a nice home, you had a good job, Jeff had lots of friends. This is the kind of neighborhood it has taken us years to get away from, and now we're right back in the middle of it all because of some man you've never met. You seem to forget. I'll be making more money in this city. Kenny Reeves is a pro. And Jeff will get the kind of coaching he needs. How do you know that? I know it! How do you know this man can coach at all? Maybe he's just some washed-up white jock with no place better to go. He can coach. Don't worry about it. All right. He can coach. But Jeff needs more than coaching. We're not gonna start this again, Carol. The boy's fine. He is just fine. Doesn't look like much, does it? Well, they got a gym and a good coach. What more do you need? I guess I'm just a little nervous, is all. There's nothing to be nervous about, Jeff. When they see how well you play ball, you're gonna make friends fast, lots of them. 
It's the classes I'm worried about. You've always been a good student. You can't tell by these transcripts. Well, you were pretty sick there for a while, you know? Dad, that was last summer. These things take time. Son, listen. All you got to do is concentrate. And that goes for basketball, too. It's your ticket to college. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. All right. I'm going to go park the car, and I'll see you inside. According to your transcript, your grades have been slipping since last year. Why is that? I was... Having trouble concentrating. That's girl trouble, first love. You know how kids are. Yeah. Uh, I see you're interested in basketball. Yes, ma'am. I was hoping to try for the team. Okay. Now, your chemistry grades are good. Now, that's an indication to me that you can make it. But let me give it to you straight. We have a policy here at Carver that if you don't keep your grades up, you can't go out for sports. Now, this may be a larger school than you're used to, but uh, our main concern still is that you keep your studies up, maintain your grades. That is our first concern, all right? Well, he'll work hard. There's no trouble there. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Mm -hmm. OK, welcome to Carver. Thank you. You're very welcome. Now, your homeroom teacher is Mrs. Thompson. She's on the third floor, room 312. Thanks, I can find it. OK, good luck. Um, I noticed the gym when we drove in. Uh -huh. Is that where we would find Coach Reeves? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Yeah. Coach Reeves? Uh-huh. Come on, Jeff. I'm Carl Simpson. How do you do? How do you do? Hello? Well, have a seat. Thank you. What can I do for you? Well, it's more what I can do for you. Huh? Yeah, this is my boy, Jeff. He just transferred here, and he'd like to try out for your team. Oh, yeah? You ever play organized ball before, Jeff? Well, he played two years at his last school. He was pretty good, too, considering they didn't have much of a coach. And most of what he's learned, I taught him myself. You play ball? Guard. Three years at Marquette. I was drafted ninth round for Baltimore. And then. Korean War got in the way. Well, I could have made it, too. Hey, Jeff's got a load of talent. Look, something you got to see. That was a game he won his sophomore year. Holiday tournament. Mm. You won it with free throws, huh? Oh, he's really great under pressure. Shoots better than 90% on the line. A real Rick Barry. Well, I guess I can always make room for a Rick Barry. I'll tell you what. You, uh, sign this permission slip, and, uh, Jeff, you bring this in with the doctor's okay, and we'll take a look at you, okay? Great. It's just fine. We'll have this in tomorrow. Thank you. Somebody I want you to meet. 
It's a secret weapon. I call it our slow break. It throws the other teams off balance. Very impressive. They execute it well, too. Yeah, yeah. They're good without a ball. <laughs> All right, ladies, I'd like you to meet an old buddy of mine. This is Don Forster. He's the scout for Portland. University? No, the Trailblazers. You remember them? <laughs> Your kid. Well, everybody's got to do something, fellas, you know. Hey, um, that Holland's really iced L.A. Hey, is Lucas really a vegetarian? I, I listen, who hey, cut the corn when they tried to get Walton? Wait, whoa, wait a minute. One at a time, guys. Uh, what kind of player are you really looking for? Well, let's see, uh, seven-foot guard that can shoot would be nice. Uh, one could have did your service. In a few years, maybe. I guess they, uh, sent you here instead of SC. Check out the real talent, huh? Yeah, in a way. Well, look, we're all under contract here, but, I mean, that can be taken care of, but, uh, which one of us do you want? Your coach. Coach? Yeah, the coach. Wow. <laughs> okay, okay, joke's over. Uh, take the showers. Make sure you get a lot of rest. See you later, guys. <laughs> that wasn't very funny. It wasn't meant to be. What the hell are you talking about? I already told you after the game. Debs is out for a while. Strider needs help, right? You're serious? Right. How about the name? Well, that's one of the things we'll have to find out about, isn't it? First, I gotta find out if you're interested. <laughs> anyway, the only other guy that the front office is considering is Bobby Sowery. Do you know him? Yeah, he's cut by Atlanta, but I thought he was still playing in York. Mm -hmm. Well, he's back home in Houston tearing up the city league. Last I heard, though, he still couldn't move to his left. Now, if you're interested, what I'll do is put you two guys together and see how good your knee is. Just how good does that have to be? Mmm, you give us 12 minutes a game. Give Strider a rest. You make about 500 a game through the end of the season. Bonus if we make the playoffs. What do you think? Can you squeeze 12 minutes a night out of that knee? Yeah, I want to give it a shot. Leaving tomorrow for Houston. I'll be back by the weekend with Selridge. Uh, look, Don, I want you to know whatever happens, I really appreciate this. I'm desperate. <laughs> Jeez, you think that guy was serious about wanting the coach? Are you kidding, man? Even yours truly's been mopping the coach up these days. And who am I? Just the greatest high school ball player there is, that's all. Ah, uh, cool. Since when can you hang with the coach? Every practice when I take him deep in the pivot. Yeah, and I guess that's why he made you eat leather three times yesterday. That's only because I wanted to make him feel better. Cool, let me ask you something. Do you ever get down on yourself? Every blue moon or so, and then I look at my trophies and my clippings, and I look at myself, and it blows over pretty quick. Yeah, I guess you got the whole world by the tail end, huh, Cool? No, I have the organ grinder by the throat. Oh, Cool, oh, come on, man. Jack. Let's go, hot, Jack. Come on. It's OK. I'll finish. Thanks, Ma. How did it go today? It went okay. Good. I like the chem teacher. They have a good lab set up. But I don't know about the other classes. <laughs> Maybe mom was right about that special school. This is the right school, Jeff. Trust me. You've got too much talent to let it be compromised by a minor handicap. Look. If you're having trouble after you make the team, we'll get yourself a special tutor. Okay, but don't mention it to anybody at Carver, because if you do, you can kiss basketball goodbye. Okay? okay. Now get over there. We're gonna work on that turnaround jumper. You gotta be sharp for practice tomorrow. Fantastic. Hey! hey! All right, go go. I ain't seen him uh, crawling the curb this morning. Uh, transmission went. 400 big ones to fix it. You hear that, Gomez? The coach's tranny died. Should have spoke to us earlier. Oh, yeah, you guys could have fixed it, huh? Yeah, but uh, we know a couple of guys can find you a new one. Cheap. Hey, not only that, man, we know a guy that can get you a new car, Cheap. Any color you want. Yeah, it's just getting one that's dry, you know what I mean? What do you think of the new kid? 
Well, he can definitely shoot free throws, man. I saw him make 23 straight before he missed. It's weird, you know? How do you mean? I don't know. It's like when you're talking to him, you got to repeat everything twice. Man, the cat's a flake. Well, he ought to fit in here just fine. Uh, all right, all right, rest period's over. Everybody had their juice and cookies? Let's go full court. Picked you clean. Uh, yourself, hey, look, man, let me tell you something. Ain't nobody got to make this turkey look bad. He's got the franchise on that. All right, all right, keep it down. He might hear you. Yeah, yeah. That's wishful thinking. Not bad. Jeff. What's with you, Simpson? You deaf or something? You can't hear me, can you? No, not really. But I can read your lips. Does anyone around here know about this? Well, just how long did you think you could go on before somebody did? I got sick with rheumatic fever a while ago. And it did something to my hearing. It leveled off a month or two, and I thought maybe it'd be all right. But now it's gotten real bad. Yeah, well, why try and keep it a secret? What's so important? Can you name one deaf basketball player who ever made it to the pros? No. Well, I'm going to be the first. Pretty good timing. What's wrong with it? Transmission. I think it was a suicide. Yeah, they get that way. Just lose their will to live.
There's something I want to talk to you about. I already know. Forrester called me when he got in town. I knew before you did. Well, it's nothing definite. I still have to try out. When will you know? This weekend. Well, what do you think? I think you're a damn fool. Don't feel you have to tread lightly or anything. You're 35 just... years old, Ken. You're kidding. You know, I just never figured you to be so greedy. What do you mean, greedy? You had good years. Couldn't settle for that. <laughs> you know, you like some punch-drunk fighter with a bell in his head instead of a brain. Look, I know I'm no Julia Serving. Julia I... Serving, hell. You're not even Kenny Reeves anymore. I really appreciate your support, Willis. Look, would I be a friend if I encouraged you to make a spectacle of yourself? You're gonna be subbing for some kid who was in the fifth grade when you first turned pro, and now you're gonna be carrying his bags? This is it? Well, I wish it was. Well, remember, them that can do and them that can't teach. And them that can't do or teach, administrate. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I had that coming up. Huh? I gotta try, Jim. What's up? It's about the new boy, Jeff Simpson. Mrs. Thompson came to see me. She said he was acting, well, kind of out of it during a lit class. She thought it might be drugs, and I was wondering if you noticed anything during practice. He's deaf. He's what? You know, deaf. He can't hear. That doesn't show up in his transcript. Well, it shows up on the kid. But why weren't we told about it? He didn't want anyone to know about it. Now, this is going to mean he needs special training. Well, no. He can read lips. So tell his teachers and have them move him to the front row. Do you want me to talk to him? Well, not just yet. Give me a few days with him. You mean you're keeping him on the team? Dreams die hard. But they die a little easier if you kill them off yourself. Oh, okay. Fuck, you're sick, man. Hey, man. Like that. Frog is frog. You're sick. Whoa! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Poor girl. What? She wants me so bad she can taste it. Barbie, <laughs> the lady was looking this away. Gomez, you want my old glasses, man? Hey, there's Simpson. Uh, forget about that dude, man. Full of himself. I tried rapping to him three times in Mulberry's class. He didn't give me nothing but a brush off. Is that right? Hey, Simpson. What's going on? Oh, I guess you think you are too good for us now, huh? You ain't lying, cowboy. I told you. Give me a piece of paper, Tommy. Take the book. What are you going to do? I am going to give our Rolls Royce over there his own <laughs> personalized license plate. Take over, Billy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey there, Simpson. What's going on, man? Wouldn't want to disturb you nothing. Just thought we'd stop by and see how the other half lives. Well, if you guys had stopped stealing basketballs, we wouldn't need to use locks. Who are you accusing of stealing? Oh, well, let's just put it this way. A few dozen basketballs grew legs of their own and walked out of here this year, so maybe this will discourage them. Well, don't bet on it. Is that what the meeting's about? No, this meeting's about Simpson. For those of you who haven't picked up on it yet, he's deaf. He's deaf? Yeah. So I want you to take that into account when he's out on the floor with you. You got to remember that if he can't see you, he can't make out what you're saying. You mean you're going to keep him on the team? Yeah, for now. 
Coach, we're really planning on doing something this year. I mean, I think we can win something. If we keep Simpson on the team, he's just going to be extra baggage. Yeah, man, I mean, don't we get a chance to vote on this thing? I mean, I thought this was a democracy. One man, one vote, and all that. That's right. And I'm the man. Uh, no, 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 look, Coolidge, I don't care if they're going in or not. That is not shooting, that's throwing the ball. You got your elbow out, your knees aren't bending, you're a mess up here. That's why you fall apart in games. Look, if you want to know how to shoot a free throw, why don't you watch Simpson? In fact, you know, he could come over and help you if you bother to ask him. It's a good idea, Coach. All right. A scrimmage. Come on, go, Simpson, go, go. No, 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 come on, hey, that's a blocking foul right there. Are you all right? Shirts fall out, let's go. Simpson over here, Simpson. All right, all right. Hey, what about the loose ball foul? Oh, you quickly right? Ah. Are you okay? Huh? All right, have him in there and get him cleaned up. All right, that's it. Hit the showers. You tell me, what was that all about? You say feed the open man. He was open. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Right down his throat. Basketball's a rough sport, coach. I'll remember that next time you lose a game by a free throw. Come on, come on, practice is over. Waiting long? Not quite an hour. Must be important. I guess it is to me. Coach, am I still on the team? You still want to be on it? Yes, I do very much. But I, I don't know if it's working out. The guys. Jeff, you're on the team. That's it. Yeah, that's it. There's no ceremonies around here. Make sure you get yourself a uniform. Your first game's next week against South. Coach, you know I can't hear a damn thing anyone says. Well, at least the crowd won't bother you. Great. Yeah, Reeves. Oh, Don. Hey, how are you? Oh, well, whatever you say is fine with me. Here, uh, well, I'll see tomorrow's Saturday. Yeah, there should be no problem. What time? Uh... Nine o'clock it is. Yeah, you remember how to get here? Okay, I'll see you then. Oh, man, what a day. We got practice in 10 minutes. All I want to do is sleep for about 10 hours. Well, at least we don't have to worry about straining no vocal cords. What do you mean? Simpson. Yeah, as if we don't have enough to worry about. I don't know. I, I kind of feel sorry for the guy. Says one handicapper to another. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Steve. I do believe you are projected. I'm serious. I mean, the guy's got a problem. He's got a problem. Uh, can't help it. Oh, man, he can't help it. He can help it, but not land it on us. He didn't. The coach did. Look, you know, I say as long as Simpson is on the team, we ought to try and help him out. El Paso. Goldstein. Hey, Goldstein. Hey, Goldstein, do you mind picking the potatoes out of your ears some other time? This is really weird. 
I can't hear a thing. Now, if only you couldn't say anything. <laughs> There's no way I could take this. I mean, this is like being underwater. Hey, hey, you think you can find a plank? Maybe we can get him to walk in. Uh, Ghosty, Ghost watch out for the tr trash can. Let him try. No, it's concrete. Ghosty, watch out for the trash can. You sure? Yeah. Okay. So don't be such a dope, man. Keep your fingers in your pockets. You know, it's a shame that Simpson can't do that. I mean, I mean, maybe Goldstein's right. Maybe. Four hundred and twenty-three dollars. You sure? That's what the man said. For a lousy transmission, the guy must have a license to steal. You want to call him back? No, no, I'll wait. A couple of hours, I'll know whether or not I can afford it. I, no, no, uh, just juice is fine. Oh, I still think you're insane. Well, you're probably right. And so are they. With injured players, they're looking to your knee for help. What's wrong with that? Sort of like a drowning man calling for a rock, isn't it? Oh, I knew I could count on you. Look, you're not the bright, promising young star you used to be. None of us are. Yeah, well, it's an awkward age. You first notice it when the papers stop using words like gifted and talented. All of a sudden, you wake up one morning and you're a veteran, a seasoned veteran. Oh, well, I gotta be going. I need some time to warm up. Could you use a cheering section? Well, thanks, but no thanks. See ya. Ken, good luck. You guys are warmed up enough. Game is 15 by two. Call it. Heads. Good start. Sorry, coach. Didn't feel like dressing up, huh? One thing I hate. Yeah, well, I can tell it's yours. It's got your name on it. One nothing, so nice shot, Bob. I thought you couldn't go to your left. Through Brex. Thought you had a bum knee. I've been working on it. Five three, Reed. Too bad for an old guy. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poetry in motion, mm -hmm. I know. Come on, don't patronize me. That guy mopped the floor with me. You know it. Hey, man, you're a little bit rusty. We're we'll waiting tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Oh, huh? No, no, no. There's not going to be tomorrow. Why not? Why not? Because I've been kidding myself. That's why not. Look, the knee would never take the strike. Why do I say that? The knee, the heart, the lungs, the whole thing. My good knee hurts worse than my bad knee. <laughs> <sighs> I am 35 years old. And I feel about 70 right now. I'm telling you, I haven't got it anymore. But thanks for the opportunity. It was fun trying. Sorry, buddy. Nah, don't be. I owe you one. <laughs> you know the old saying, dreams die hard? Well, you're looking at kicking and screaming right here.
the second half, we're finally going to beat these guys. <laughs> And for Simpson, Haywood. Hey, the captain, you take charge. I'm the captain. All right. All right. All right. Okay, Dick. Who's having it? You go ahead. I think it's a sprain. Well, you better get an x-ray just to be safe. Sure, Coach, thinking you along without me. Uh, for a while. But you won't be out long. You'll be back in no time. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Jeff, go on out to the gym. Your mother's worried about you. Um, we didn't have any purple hearts, but we thought you might like a little souvenir. Oh, he's lucky he didn't get hurt real bad. Mm, I'm the one that's lucky. You talk about people trying to lead their kids' lives for them. I always figured I was just trying to give him some guidance. Don't be too hard on yourself. I think he wanted it just as much as you did. <laughs> well, thank you for looking after my boy. Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think you're doing? Hey, man, this is the slow-mo replay of what I did to my boy who went after Simpson, and the cat didn't know what hit him. Instead of throwing punches in the air, he should have been throwing elbows. <laughs> oh, I guess you would have just uh, went in there and landed a right cross to his jaw, right? I'm a boxer, man. I duck him. I slip him. The ref would have never seen a thing. Oh. Pow. You got pasta on the bread. I got talent. <laughs> Easy, champ. Say Damn. Billy. Watch out here, Billy. Check him out. <laughs> Yo, Mick, you gotta cut me. I can't cut you, kid. You gotta cut me, Mick. I can't see a thing. Ow, boy. <laughs> Ow, oh. I gotta win this one for yo. Yo ho! Yo Adrian! <laughs> and there goes a, a Rocky, a Balboa, Damn, the Jeff. flower in Italian. Look at him go at the creep. He's all over creep. 
bleed, but not miss. Oh, what a courage! Oh, what heart! Oh, what a man! Oh, what a dead man! <laughs> I thought you were mooching rides off Jim Willis. Well, he stays too late. But I guess that's why he's getting the big money and you're not. And just how long will it be before your car is ready? Three days. Uh, two days, uh, bread and butter. If I can get somebody to uh, take me to the garage on Thursday before five. <laughs> Incredible. I got it for 400 bucks even, plus a personally autographed basketball. By you? Out of Skillmore. Oh, yeah. I heard about your tryout. It's too bad. You wanted me to go. No, I didn't say that. Hey, she wanted me to stay. No, 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 no. I didn't say that either. I was uh, just being polite. Yeah. But if it had uh, worked out, would you have taken it? Well, 500 bucks a game, 82 games a year, that buys a lot of transmissions, you know. So you would have taken it? Well, I suppose if uh, somebody had gotten down on their pretty little knees and begged me to stay for the sake of good old Carver, I might have reconsidered. Oh, I guess Jim Willis's knees were just too fragile. Uh, excuse me. Could you tell me where I can find Jeff Simpson? Around here? Thank you. How you doing? Your father told me where I could find you. How's it going? How's the finger? It's good as new. The first week or so was tough, but I'm getting the hang of it. Does this mean you'll be quitting Carver? No, I just come here afternoons to work on my lip reading and the team. I like working with the kids, and well, it's still basketball. Well, I can think of worse jobs. Tell me something. Was it worth it? Yeah. You won't laugh. Yeah. I knew I wouldn't be able to keep up much longer. But I was on the team at home even before I got sick. Even won a game with two free throws. My dad still carries the clipping. I've seen it. Well, that was more than a year ago when I could still hear. I'll never forget the sound of the people cheering as long as I live. I guess I just wanted to hear the cheering again. Just one more time. I know just how you feel. Nobody was hurt. Well, you know Coach Reeves? Well, he's going to adopt you. Uh, he is. I just want him to stay at my apartment for three weeks so we can play in a few games, that's all. <sighs> Why don't you ask the coach if he can cope with some uh, company? I can't, he just split. He split? You mean you got the place all to yourself? Are you crazy? Just tell me that, are you crazy?
Oh, please. You know, if people were paid to sleep, you'd be a very rich man. Yeah. I promise Trina and Darren you'd make them pancakes for breakfast. Pancakes? What happened to cereal? That's what I always give them. That's why I promised you'd make them pancakes. Everybody needs a little change now and then. Well, I need a change just as much as they do. Well, I'll tell you what. This is Saturday. I'll make pancakes. Well, actually, Miami Beach is what I had more in mind. <laughs> I gotta get to work. Take good care of your brother and your sister. And make sure they get to school on time. Hmm? Okay, Mom. Bye. Bye, Mom. Love you. Love you. Warren, the button came off. Well, get a needle and thread and I'll sew it on. Yeah, drink your juice. I don't like juice. Drink it anyway. Why? Because I told you to. Here, Warren. Here, here, give me. Sit down and eat your breakfast. What did I do to deserve this? I'll hurry up and eat your breakfast. You'll be late for school. Oh, man, let me see. Look, CJ, this is the last time I'm doing this, man. You could have had this back to me by 4 p.m. Don't worry, man. You get it back by the 4 p.m. Hey, we're shining, so. Hey, man, look here. They're having a little chili to drill after practice. We all thought we were going to sneak down there and check out the pom-poms, you know? I like that. Check out the pom-poms. I can think of worse things to do. Yeah, I bet you can. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's the matter? I got to pick up my sister from daycare. Oh, man. It's a drag. But look here, cool. Don't worry about a thing, man. If we run into any routines that are really hot, we'll let you know about it. <laughs> oh, you guys are too good to me. <laughs> yeah, well, we tried desperately. So why do they got to pull me out of sex education class? Man, I don't like sex education. They probably figured it's a class you need the least instruction in. Well, all I want to know is what I do. Relax, will you, Coolidge? I told you everything I know. Well, isn't it against the law to arrest people for, uh, what you call it? <sighs> they just told me to bring you to the principal's office, not read you your rights. Well, if it's about the car they found in the swimming pool, I don't know nothing about it. Oh. Hey, Mom, what's the matter? You OK? What happened? What's the matter? I'm afraid we have some bad news for you, Warren. There's been a fire. A fire? They, they think it was an electrical short. How bad? Everything. You mean the whole house just burned down? They wouldn't let me go in for anything. I'm glad the kids were at school. Oh, thank God. I can't believe this. My clothes. My stereo. Warren. Since your mother has an aid to families with dependent children grant, the county will have to help you relocate. But this could take several weeks. Mm. His Aunt Linda is going to put us up until we find a new place. She lives in Altadena. Altadena? Well, that's no problem. Warren can get a special transfer status and attend school in that district until a new place is found. Yeah, but... Uh, Warren, why don't you go with your mother now and uh, help her settle everybody in at your aunt's? And then you can come back tomorrow and get your things. I can't go to Ann Linda's. Why not? We play Keeler next weekend. Coach, you know I can't miss that game. Yeah, well, Coolidge, I don't know if there's anything I can do about it. You gotta do something. Warren, your Aunt Linda would like you to come. Coach? Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, you just finish out the day here, and I'll see if we can figure something out. You heard? Coolidge? Yeah, I heard. You realize we're dead without him? Uh-oh, the killer gang. Yeah, oh, it's right. The kid's a natural resource. You're missing an endangered species. We can't let him go to Altadena. Well, wait a minute. 
kid's house just burned down. Are we being a little insensitive just thinking about basketball? Yeah, well, he's the one that brought it up. Oh. Oh, that's it? Oh. Can't you come up with something a little more substantial than oh? Yes. Find someone to put him up. Oh. Right. That's a good idea. Thank you. Principal has to be good for something. Think so? Will you hurry up and have your manicure? I got next game. Come on, man, let's play. You and me. apartment house burned down. His what? Really? Did you hear about that? Oh, yes. Now, nobody was hurt, but everything was lost. Gee, then that's gonna be rough. You know that? Everything? Even hysteria? I mean, we know how you got that. <laughs> uh, Reese, we're not interested right now in Coolidge's criminal record, okay? Oh, no, no, Coach. It wasn't illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. Now, listen up, will you? Listen. Until the family is relocated, his mother's moving them all to Altadena to stay with his aunt, which means Coolidge may have to stay there for a while. And if he does, he'll miss being here for the Keeler game. Hey, be here? What do you mean? You mean no Coolidge? What are we going to do without Coolidge? They can't do that. Yeah. Unless someone here puts him on. Well, well Coach, uh, I don't know. My old man got laid off a couple months ago. You know, things are tight. Go, man. Yeah, uh, same here. I don't think uh, we should put Coolidge up at our house, Coach. My grandparents are kind of frail. Well, it might be a medical risk. <clears throat> Hold on a minute, folks. Have no fear. Morris Thorpe, as usual, will take care of this situation. All right. All right. All right. All right. Wait a second. I'm sorry about that. What is it, Thorpe? Well, my sister just moved back home with a kid. I, I mean, he's a little kid, but... Shucks, Coach. We're in the process of re-renovating my house, and it's a mess. No one? Look, Coach, we like to put the brother up, but, you know, he's like an elephant, man. My mama just can't <laughs> afford to feed him. So that's it, huh? Coolidge goes to Alpadina, and we lose to Keeler again? That's what I call team spirit. Now, wait a minute, Coach. That just is not fair. Hey, man, I don't see you volunteering to take him in. Really? Right. Yeah. yeah. How about you, Coach? I mean, you can afford it. Yeah, it sure would be a shame to lose a big guy. Come on, Coach, what do you say? That is the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard. Why? Won't be for a long time. <laughs> He's a minor. You'll have to be legally responsible for him. So? So? <laughs> do you want to be liable for the actions of Lauren Coolidge? Sybil, he's not a convict. Next thing you'll be telling me I'm fraternizing with the enemy. Well, yes. You're a member of the faculty, he's a member of the student body, and the two don't usually mix. I'm not asking him to go steady. Okay, how will the rest of the team feel? They're all for it. Well, how will they feel when you two arrive at school together? Now, kids get pretty sensitive about that kind of thing. We'll come in separate entrances, right? Mm -hmm. <sighs> what about the expense? I mean, what, what if you get sick? What if you, you just can't stand each other? I just want him to stay at my apartment for three weeks so we can play in a few games, that's all. What can possibly go wrong? You know, I've had roommates before, it's no big deal. It's just two guys sharing an apartment, that's it. <sighs> okay. Okay. Have you uh, told the bride-to-be? I'm off to tell her right now. <laughs> Say, Coolidge, man, uh, I'm sorry about your house. Thanks. Into everyone's life, a little rain must fall. Yeah. Tough break, right? right? Oh, hey, man, uh, chin up. Hey, uh, listen, cool, man. Sincere condolences, bro. Right. It's a very mentally depressing thing. Hey, cool. Sorry to hear about that, man. It's 
Yeah, Jig, man, I ain't gonna be here for a while. Oh? Yeah, I'm going out to Dina and stay with my aunt. Didn't the coach tell you? Out to Dina. Smoggy up there. So I may not, you know, I may not play in the Keeler game. Oh, man, that's too bad. It's gonna be rough without you. I may not be back for a month. <laughs> hey, man, what's with you guys, man? I, my house burns down. I lose my clothes, my stereo. I can't play in the Keeler game. <coughs> Say, brother, I hate to break the bad news to you, but you ain't going nowhere. I'm not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And why not? Well, you know Coach Reeves? Well, he's going to adopt you. <laughs> he is. In the flesh. You're not giving me a bunch of... No, nah, man, well, he's gonna put you up. He's got some stock in the food cup. Uh, say, Coolidge. Hey, Coach. Look, I've been thinking it'd be a shame for you to go to Al Pacino and Mr. Keel again. So, okay. Okay? Okay, I'd really like to stay at your place. You would? Yep. Oh. And uh, I'll make it up to you someday. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Shake it up, baby. Shake it up, baby. A twist and shout. Twist and shout. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, baby. You come on. Huh? Your mother gave me some money for some school clothes. Well, what do you think? You got a stereo? Yeah, yeah, I got a stereo right over here. Hey? And uh, this is your room right here. The sofa pulls out into a bed. Oh, yeah, I'm used to those. Yeah, I'll bet. Well, just to refresh your memory, let me give you the cook's tour. Follow me. Now, in here's my bedroom. There's a bathroom, there's a place for your toothbrush. You uh, got a Ferdinand when you move it. And uh, there's a kitchen here. And uh, that's all. What, are you hungry, Coolidge? You want something to eat? I never really learned to cook. Being on the road in hotels, you know. How about you? I cook OK. Hmm? What's this thing? Well, that's a food processor. My sister gave it to me last Christmas. I think she was giving me the hint that I ought to learn to do something other than fry eggs and hamburgers. Well, what's the process? Well, all sorts of things, or so they say. I've never really used it, actually. It's got all these blades, see? Oh, yeah, I've seen this on TV. It chops, dices, slices, even juliennes. Don't I have a knife sharpener, too, or something? I don't think that's exactly the same machine. You should have got the one with the knife sharpener. All right, hey, give me one of those towels, will you? Over there. Thanks. Yeah, my mother and me, we take care of everybody. Brothers and sisters, one of each, both younger. Mm -hmm. Thank you, pick. How about your father? He took off a long time ago. Time ago, huh? Don't you ever see him? Nah, not very often. Not very often, huh? Ah, uh, coach. Here you go. Thanks. What were you talking about? Me? Oh, yeah. Uh, how about your father? How do you feel about not seeing him? It's no big thing. Only tough luck is I'm the oldest kid, so I sort of have to be the man around the house. It's OK. I got you a blanket. Oh, and uh, there's an extra pillow in the closet. I wonder what that's for. 
I cook this mess, so you clear. Jack of spades, the knock is ten, and it's done. You need that? Uh-huh. Gin. Please. Uh, never mind what you're holding. Right now, it's 1,179 to 11. You had enough? Bad time, Warren. Oh, adios. Yeah. Pillows coming. One, two, three. Behind the back. <laughs> Dear. Oh. Told you I was an expert. Yeah, well, most of my guests don't sleep out here. Good night, Warren. Good night, John Boy. Coast is clear. Are you sure? Uh, Coolidge, it's 7 a.m. Remember you told me you wanted to get here early so nobody would see you arrive with me? Ed, the janitor isn't even here yet. OK, we're here now, so what do you want to do? Well, we could always open the doors and get out. What for? It's 7 o'clock. There's nothing to do. Besides, someone may see us. Now, what is so bad about being seen with me, anyway? Coach, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but it's, it's bad for my image. How about on the basketball court? That's business. You're telling me that I am bad for your image? Ready to go. Uh, I'll try to remember to wear a suit to practice next time. It's not like that. You're a coach, and I'm a player, and it's like oil and water. It just don't mix. What? I mean, look, if Carver's a prison, then I'm an inmate, and you're one of the warden's boys. So if the inmates see me hanging around you too much, I could catch a shiv in the ribs, and that ain't no good. A shiv in the ribs? Look, Coolidge. Outside of the obvious fact that you've been watching many too many late shows, what does that mean? I'm the biggest, baddest guy in school. I got to set an example. What kind of example? Well, man, if they see me hanging around the coast too much, man, it means I'm getting soft, I'm giving into the system, and my image is brave and tough. The kind of business, no man. Okay, Mr. Tough Guy, I swear I'll never tell a soul that the kind that bends to no man just took a dive for Ed the janitor. You want to get out of the car now? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Carver High Palace, located in Los Angeles, California. We're here with pick up the action with Coolidge, the mongoose going up against Jackson, the snake. The action is live here today. So, uh, how you like staying with the coach? Man only been there one night. The man has promise. I don't think I can stay there if I was you. Why not? Because he's too neat, man. You can't trust that much neatness. You live. <laughs> Oh, I like a man who respects sloppiness. Yeah, well, the coach ain't said anything about that, and I'm only staying with him a couple weeks anyway. Uh, let's go 20 laps, and I don't mean like a warm up, so I want to see some running. Oh, oh, come on, come on, hey. let's go. Let's go. Uh, take it easy on the coach. Man, you sleep too well last night. Yeah, strange places always make some noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, let's go. 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 Let's
nervous. I hope you let me night light on. Yeah, I hope you didn't take all the covers, Coach. Uh, say, Coach, um, if my house burns down, would you put me up to? Is this something you're working on now, Milton, or you're just speaking hypothetically? What? Just don't play with matches, all right? You want some help with this, Milton? The first step's always the toughest. Thanks, Coach. Anytime. Now, look, Mary, don't give me that stony stare. The cheerleaders get free passes, not their boyfriends. You tell your boyfriend that he can get a student council pass for half price. That's as good as I can do. All right? Well? Well, what, Sybil? How is it? How is it? Oh. Uh, Warren Coolidge arrived promptly at 6.44. Dinner was made, dinner was eaten. Homework was done, TV was watched, everybody went to sleep, okay? He's only been there for a night. Why is everybody making such a big thing out of this? Well, well who's making such a big deal? I'm not making such a big deal. Oh? <laughs> not too much TV, Ken. Coolidge, uh, my radio was off in the car. Well, was there an earthquake in the vicinity or something? Gee, Coach, I didn't hear anything about it. Man, out loud. It looks like a bomb went off in here. Well, I haven't got time to talk about it. What do you think? Haven't I seen that suit someplace before? Hey, it's a good fit. Look at the sleeves. Coolidge. That's my suit. You got good taste for a white guy. You're wearing my suit. Well, don't it look good on me? That's my shirt. And the tie, a very good sense of color. How about some shoes? You like some shoes, too? Well, I tried them. They're too small. Oh, sorry about that. It's all right, no biggie. Cool. Couldn't you have at least asked me? You weren't here. If you were planning to wear the stuff, I could put on something else. I did. No, it's all right. Just wear that. Are you sure you got lots no, of no, other no, stuff? Cool. In there. Trust me, wear that. All right? Because you lost your other stuff in the fire. I guess it's only right that uh, we're both about the same size. Yeah. What a coincidence. Lucky. Yeah. Uh, look, don't spoil your appetite. That's why I got all those groceries. We're gonna have a rock cornish game here. Oh it's no, got... thanks. No, I'm late. For what? For a date. I'll see you later. Yeah, but no, it serves four people. I got rice and stuffing and everything. No. But the instructions on the back... I get a key. I knew the school ID was going to be good for something. Gotta get him some better locks. Now, if I was hungry, Let's see, I'd have a milkshake. Milk, right? Some one for chocolate syrup. Yes, sir. Ice cream. There you go. Well, this evening was wonderful. That couldn't have been no better. Yes, sir. Well, she's just wonderful. I love that girl. Oh, I love that line. That's about this little bit more. More than you ready? Yes, sir. It's going to be good. Let's see. Oh. 
What the hell are you doing? It just came on by itself. <laughs> Rise and shine. Time to get up. Uh, well, Coolidge, I'm not your mother. Sit down, relax, watch your teammates sweat, knowing that you don't have to run. What else would I have to do instead? It's me, Coolidge. You think I'll be able to come up with something? Hey, come on, Coolidge. Cool. Watch out, man. I think I'll keep running. You do that. Oh, yeah, I meant to tell you, I had paint on my sneakers. You used my razor to scrape off paint? Yeah. Oh, that was brilliant, Warren. It worked. Look, it nearly took off half my face. Look here. I said I saw it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, no, you didn't. Hey, man. <sighs> all right, all right, never mind. Do you have any homework? You don't have any homework? I gotta do homework. Uh -huh. I can't even go out. Yeah. <clears throat> you say so. I just want to ask you one question. How come you get to go out? Because I'm the grown up. You want me to get it? Yeah, William. Hello, Ken Reeves residence. Hello. Warren, is that you? Oh, hi, Mom. I got wonderful news. We got a new place to live in. It's great. People's Aid found us a furnished place two blocks away from where we used to live. Um, listen, would it be okay if I stay over another couple of days? Warren, I don't know. I think we've imposed on Mr. Reeves long enough. It ain't no imposition. He wants me to stay. He asked me if I'd help him out with a few things. I promised I would. Well, all right. Yeah, okay, I'll see you Sunday. Bye. Who was that? It was just my mother. Anything wrong? No, nah, she was just checking up on me to make sure everything was all right. Oh, well, just so we don't disappoint her, let's start right now with you hitting the books. Hmm? Enough of this. All right, Mr. Wise, old man. How do you solve one of those equations that has the X and the Y? Let me see that. 5X plus 3Y over 2 equals 79. 15X minus 4Y equals 16. What do you do with that? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Well, uh... First you multiply, but then you gotta... I guess subtract. So, well, what, do you want me to finish your homework for you? I'm not gonna baby you through this. Yeah, he's here, Jackson. He's doing his homework. Yeah, hang on. And do it, all right? All right. I'll see you later. All right. What's up, Jackson? Hey, man, ain't much, ain't much happening here. Sound like you're having a party there. Nah, it ain't too much fun. I can't cope with this algebra. Hey, man, look here. Why don't you ask the coach if you can cope with some uh, company? I can't. He just split. He split? You mean you got the place all to yourself? Hey, don't move, man. I'm going to call some of the guys, and we'll be right there, OK? Yo, hey, wait. Whoa. Too neat. No, it's not. It's cool. Hey, listen, Warren, man, what you got in here as far as liquid refreshment goes? You know what I mean? I don't know if that's cool or not, man. Oh, come on. Cool. Hey, hey. and you got King Milton? Yeah, Milton's out and doing very well on his own. <laughs> but tell me this, Cool Breeze. Does this place or does this place not have a bar? I don't know. This can boost somewhere, but. Uh... <laughs> Ain't no buts about it, my man, according to my. Time piece. Uh, this is the cocktail hour. Wait, more red. Well, no, no, wait, no, wait, no. Hey, no, 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 yeah. Morris, you got the number? In more ways than one. What you waiting on, blood? Mm. Get to it. And what are you fixing to do now? Hey, Coolidge, man, what is missing from this pretty picture? Girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the coach ain't gonna like that. Hey, where is the coach anyways? He's on a date. <clears throat> well, then you know he ain't got nothing against girls. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. This is Morris Thorpe. Is Nancy there? Thank you. Is Nancy there? Say, Mama, what's happening? Yeah. Working with Sybil. Not with, for. Oh. And I do, a lot. She's the first boss I've had that doesn't expect coffee served in the morning, errands run at noon, and phone excuses to the home front at five when there's a poker game on yeah, tap. That's probably because she's the first female you ever worked for, right? I wish I could say yes. You know, I feel like a college girl again. Going back to a man's apartment and shooting the breeze with his roommate. Oh, Coolidge? Oh, he's all right. We'll get rid of him. Oh, I think Warren's cute. Oh, yeah, well, like a baby elephant. <laughs> I don't want to do his homework and go to bed. Come on, come on, come on, let's go out, out. 
better. Will, will you just, just wait for a minute? Just hold on for a second, Jenny. Are you crazy? Just tell me that. Are you crazy? Jackson wanted to come over. Jackson wanted to come over? Whose apartment is this, Jackson? No, it's mine. Mine. I don't need to come back and find the whole place being torn up by some riot, all my furniture and everything. I don't know what I'm going to do with you, Coolidge. You've been a disaster from the start. You, 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 first you wear my clothes, then you break into the apartment. What do you want? You want me to move out? Is that it? Tell me. This is ridiculous. You want me to leave? Don't tempt me. Let me get something straight with you. You're not here in the past. This is not summer camp. The only reason you're here is because of the kill again. If it wasn't for that, you wouldn't be here in the first place. So what do you want me to do? I want you to make this place immaculate by the time I get back from taking Jenny home, and I want to find you sound asleep. Got it? <sighs> Come on. You know who their center is? Johnson. How tall? Six five, six six. Better than you? Why? You want to trade? Where are you going? School. I don't want to be late. I'll drive you. We'll visit the walk. Mrs. Coolidge, uh, Warren just left for school. I'm sorry. You want me to see if I... No. I, I just wanted to call to thank you for putting Warren up. I hope he hasn't been a problem. A problem? Oh, no, no. Everything's been fine. As soon as we are settled, I'd like you to come over to our new place for dinner. If you got a pen, I'll give you the address. Address? You mean you already found a place? Didn't Warren tell you? We moved in today. No, he never said a thing. I talked to him last night and told him. But he said he had promised to help you with a few things around the house and that he needed to stay a couple of more days. Oh, well, I'm sure it was just some misunderstanding. If you like, I'll drop him off tonight, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. No problem. Bye. Listen, I just want to apologize for any part that I may have had in last night's mishap. I, I just hope that... No, Pop. Excuse me? I'm not going to bench Coolidge or anybody. Thanks, Coach. I... Uh, uh, how about that Achilles tendon of yours? Been acting up lately? Uh, yeah, it hurts real bad. What hurts real bad, Morris? The Achilles heel. Perhaps you should see a doctor, someone who's qualified to handle the problem. Thanks, Miss McCann. Listen, Coach, I'll see you later. I'm sorry. Thanks, Morris. I thought it was his uh, left foot. It's your left foot, though. <laughs> oh, well, well, well. My, my, my. News travels fast, I see. I uh, hope you weren't too hard on your roommate. Do me a favor. Don't gloat. OK. Bill, 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 Hey, where's Coolidge? Hey, where is Coolidge? Didn't he come in with you guys? We thought he was with you. You mean nobody's seen him? Well, the last time I saw him was uh, third period biology. What, was he sick or something? No, he looked fine to me. Well, man, that's too easy. I say we give this one some real thought. 
Well, he must have had a good reason. He wouldn't do something like this, Todd. He didn't do this to you. He did it to me. Hey, man, what y'all think the coach meant by Coolidge not showing up because of him, huh? Hey, man, that's a lot of bull. The cat's covering for him, man. He's his roomy and he's covering. Uh, I thought, come on, man, Coolidge's only moved in there for a couple of days. It doesn't matter. It's the big guy syndrome. See, they feel picked on because they're freaks, man. It binds them together. Man, where you come up with a crazy idea like that? It's the truth. They all got the same problems. Fitting in the cars, fitting in the clothes. And then, of course, there's the lady problem. Thorpe, you're crazy. I mean, Cooley's been going with Diana for the longest, man. She ain't under five foot one or something. Yeah, yeah and don't that make you think sometimes? I mean, the man has to stand on top of Salami's car just to kiss her. Look, man, a man's got to do what a man's got to do, right? Hey, Cooley's got a friend for life in the coach, man, as long as he don't shrink. <laughs> How you doing, brother man? What's happening? All sweet home. Why? How you doing? Fine. That's good. Oh, baby, I'm so glad to see you. How you feeling? We missed you. You want to see my three fish that Linda gave me? Yeah, sure. Place looks good, mama. Glad you like it. Yeah. I saw I was home soon. I some stuff to get. This is Edgar and that's Alex. Well, where's Warren? No, Warren. <laughs> well, you told me I had three fish. There's only two of them in here. Aunt Linda gave me three, but I lost one. Well, where's Darren? In his room. He's in a bad mood. Well, I'll go talk to him. Where's his room? In there. What's going on, Big D? I got a radio, but it don't work. Don't work all right. Think you can fix it? Yeah, maybe. You like living with the coach better than living with us? Yeah. Come on, man. I like living with you the best. What is it? And yeah, see, you always want to mess with somebody. Well, the time still a kid. Kid. The boxing though. Mrs. Coolidge? Mr. Reeves. Didn't expect to see you so soon. Is Warren here? He's in back with his brother. Oh, well, that's a relief, because he didn't show up at the game. I was worried about him. How is he? He's fine. He missed a game? Well, that's funny. He didn't say anything to me about it. And basketball means so much to him. Well, I think it was probably my fault. Last night, we had a falling out. Oh, dear. Would you please sit down? Yeah, thanks. Why, what happened? Now, apparently, he didn't want to leave. Well, I guess he was just blowing off a little steam, and I think I said a few things to him I didn't really need to say, and he got the impression I didn't want him around. Now I understand. You see, there hasn't been a man around our house in seven years, and I think spending this time with you was important to him. He's had to be the man of the house ever since his daddy left. That's a big responsibility for a 17-year-old. I know. But he lives up to it. The only problem is, is that he's so big and strong, sometimes I forget that he's barely past being a child himself. <laughs> Me too. Well, can I see the giant baby? I could suspend you for missing the game. So you gonna? Nope. What happened? We lost. You want to know the final score? I didn't think so. I'd like to talk to you about last night. That's OK. I know how it is. No, I don't think you do, Coolidge. I'm glad you like staying with me. Well, I thought we were, you know, kind of enjoying each other's company. I thought we were, too. The man, you said the only reason you wanted me there in the first place was to play in the Keeler game. Well, let me tell you something, man. One good size rejection in seven years is plenty enough. Coolidge. I'm not your father. Yeah, I know that. 
You know, when I was at Boston College, Mr. Willis and I were roommates. I tried to throw him out three times. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he used to leave his dirty socks in my pillow. Four years, I never saw him touch a dish. What you call a real slob. The principal tried to fix you. You weren't half as bad as he was, not half. Well, outside the food process, I thought we did pretty good. I thought we did, too. In fact, I think we ought to do it again sometime. <laughs> you mean that? I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. I got a couple of tickets to the Laker game tonight. You want to go? Now, I got a lot of stuff to do in there. Uh, Mid-court against Seattle. Are you sure? Yeah, thanks anyway. Oh, I guess I'll see you tomorrow, huh? Yeah. So long, shorty. I'll get this box. Good. Those are extra towels. They go into that room. I'll get it. Hi, you know, I was thinking that if I gave you a hand with this stuff, we ought to be able to make the second half. Now, well, where does this go? Hold this, will you? walk around the school like they own the place. And they strut down the halls like, like the world should get out of their way. I could bring in a team of old men off the street that can take you guys to the cleaners. Uh, name the place and the time, Coach. We'll be there. My first shot's going to be a fallaway jumper, and you know where it's going to end up. In your face. By Sunday, they're gonna be erecting more Thorpe statues all over the neighborhood. What, were you about to rob a bank and get away with it or something? I know you're not an ignorant man, so I feel the need to let you know that this is the weekend that I, Morris Thorpe, will bring ecstasy to the Gilliam triplets. Uh, they're not triplets, Thorpe. They're only sisters. Oh. A mere technicality. <laughs> if I keep this ball spinning as long as Happy Hairston, someone's gonna owe me the key to their car this weekend. Yeah, and if you don't, what do I get? Well, we let you live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Man>. wow. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Hey, Go-Go. What happened? Did you give up the dry look? <laughs> Please. Man, now that uh, <clears throat> my field goal percentage is up near 55%, Lupa's decided she's definitely in love with me. <laughs> Say, hey, what, uh, what are you doing this weekend? Well, I think I'm just gonna stay in the sunshine, you know, just gonna kick back and let them come to me. Oh, hey, I guess you're gonna be alone all weekend, then. 
Well, I'll get an idea of how you spend your life then, won't I? <laughs> Not true. I have a date this weekend. Mm. With what? Something, no doubt, from the animal shelter. <laughs> the only price happens to be a very nice girl. We have a lot in common. Yeah, virginity. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'd rather make out with a hot curl and iron. Uh, I think you guys are forgetting that Naomi spelled backwards is I moan. She doesn't moan, she... <laughs> I'm telling you, ever since we went 10 straight, I can't keep the women away from me. They get a bit testy when I told them no autograph. Jackson, the reason you're not signing any autographs is because nobody wants to stand around while you print. <laughs> hey, Salami, what you got going this weekend? Gonna show Nick of the town. Where you going, Little Italy? No, Watts Towers. <laughs> hey, what's all the racket in here? Coach, things pick up for you since we started winning? We don't see you hanging around with that rag anymore. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm letting that one go by. The real reason I popped in here is because I need a favor from you guys this weekend. Uh, uh, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it right there. I never liked anarchy. Well, if you don't like her, you're going to hate Naomi Price. <laughs> hey, that's enough. What'd she ever do to you? <laughs> that overbite. <laughs> now, look, I've agreed to help raise money for the United Way. Now, you going to do commercial for United Way? Hey, if you're going to do commercials, go beer. That's where the money's at. <laughs> I was wondering if you guys would mind spending Saturday afternoon washing cars to raise money. Perdóname, señor. No hablo inglés. Uh, Gomez, go, go. No trabajas. Uh, run laps. Mucho laps. Comprende? <laughs> Hey, uh, listen, Coach, we really love to help you out. Uh, let us have a private team meeting. We talk about it, and we get back to you. OK. You sure? Sure. Right. Good. OK. Go ahead. Not a prayer. Pasadena. Hey, guys, charity begins at home. Is that what Jewish guilt means? All right, now, let's not waste any time. It's Friday afternoon. Let's vote. All those in favor, say aye. All those opposed, say no. No, no. 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 Hey, coach, pass. I'm very disappointed in you. We're counting on you to get over it, coach. Maybe you don't understand. I think it's important for you guys to give a little of yourself to other people. That's what's on tap for tonight. Yeah, so why don't you get into it by starting with Salami's car? It's a good idea, Coach. You know any good car washes? Matter of fact, I do. He'll turn the other cheek. He always does. What you want? From the look of this car, when I turn the vacuum on, there's a good chance I'm going to suck up the floorboards. Yeah, you hurt this car, and you'll be missing a lot more than just hair, pal. Like this style. <laughs> and careful, this is vintage '63 colors. See the size of cue balls assist. It's an absolute necessity for the job. You can get the hose really deep in the back seat. How do you put the roof up on this car? Hey, don't try to pull a fast one on me. I'm paying for a full wash inside and out. You want the jet spray wax, too? Yeah, nothing's too good for us. We're number one. That's a lot. You know, it's a rare opportunity when our teammates pull into you. Hayward, Reese, Jackson, and Thorpe can see their futures before them. I think Goldstein has to die. See, what we got to do is we got to clean up this boy's mental attitude. <laughs> oh, come on. Whoa! Come on, guys! Jesus! <laughs>
to this. Now cough it up. cars for a living, Emma. What do you do for a living? Oh, well, I happen to be a basketball star, you see, and I do a little uh, high school on the side. Strictly second team. I'm the star carver. Please, more stuff, the backbone of the carver high basketball machine. <laughs> Say, man, how come you guys washing cars? Because they're dirty. Yeah, well, you know, you could be doing something else. What's wrong with washing cars, boy? <laughs> well, you know, it's manual labor, brother. Man should never be ashamed of an honest day's work. We all do the best we can. Hey, look, if you guys are looking for bigger tips with these speeches, we didn't just get off the bus. Hey, you missed a spot. If that's not a spot, that's a hole. Pretty strong soap you're using. Thanks, blood. Here's another tip for you. Soybean futures. Excuse me, gentlemen. Hey, don't ruin the shot at the cab, man. Watch out, sis. You know I don't ride the cab. Say, man, these seats are still wet. Want to laugh? A little heartbreak, isn't it? did an honest day's work. You know, you're not alone in all this. Some of the Rams are working at a car wash down near the Coliseum. A few of the Lakers doing the same thing over in Englewood, so we ought to make a lot of money this weekend. Yeah, we'd like to grab some footage for the evening news of the Globetrotters working the charity car wash. Ah, no problem. It'll be good publicity for the charity. Well, just run the car through. We'll catch the team in action. Why don't you do mine? I can really use it. Now, Curly, I'll go 50-50 with you on any loose change you find. Forget it. Anything I can do to help? Yeah, grab a rag, brother. I bet this is the first time you spent 25 hours to wash your own car. You know, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a globetrotter. You think there's still a chance? When the call goes out for a slow way forward, you're at the top of our list. It always looked like so much fun. You know, not living on a diet of harried coaches and per-game averages, rabid out-of-town crowds. Saves a digestive tract. Every game is a homer for us. You know, even after I reached the pros, I used to come down and watch you guys play in the first half of the doubleheaders. It was always good for a laugh. We've seen you play ball, Kenny. You gave us a lot of laughs, too. Is the Harlem Globe trying to watch the cars here? That's right, Sonny. You know where I can get autographs? Why don't you sign it? Well, me, uh, I don't think I have the strength. You ain't a Globe Trotter. Oh, yeah? How do you know? Because you're white. That's only because he's been watching cars all day. He's been bleached. Here, I'll sign it. You ain't a globe trotter either. This kid is hard to please. And I'm black enough for you? You're black, but you're too old. Yeah, man. 
I had to sign a kid up for my team. He fit right in. Is coaching ghetto ball getting to you, Kenny? Yeah, well, it was rough last year when we were losing regularly. Losing? What's that? You know, I think we lost more games last year than you guys have in the last 30. Well, hopefully you're doing better this year. Yeah, well, at least this year we're winning, but nobody's going to confuse Carver High with UCLA. Carver High? Yeah, that's where I coach. 63 cut this combo? Another beautiful day in Southern California. There's a real contradiction. Hey, cut it out, Nikki. This mentally depressing attitude of yours has got to stop. I mean, you're starting to bum the guys out. This is where you live now. Forget it. This is where you live. An egg cream and stickball man like me don't belong in a land of volleyball and carrot juice. I'm just passing through. Well, keep your head up in the sun. It's starting to look like your liver's gone bad. If L.A. were any more laid back, it'd be unconscious. <laughs> live without power. <laughs> <laughs> you you whining again? Hey, let go of the anti-L.A. vibe, man. This isn't such a bad place to live. I'd rather be living in a subway station. At least I can breathe the air. This brown stuff can kill you. Yeah, and so could this fist if you don't shut up. It's like living in a world filled with Ken and Barbie clones. Present company excluded, of course. But if I hear one more person tell me, have a nice day, I'm gonna puke. I had enough. Oh, please. But you <laughs> shot me in the back seat. Finally, peace and quiet. <laughs> you know, Nick, it could be a lot worse. Yeah, I could have grown up here. Uh, You're missing the point, New York. Instead of hanging out here all day, you could be working, slaving away like them cats back there at the car wash. You know, you wouldn't catch me bending my back like that. You might not have to. The way we've been playing lately, we might just join the NBA as a new franchise. There right. sure ain't no <laughs> high school competition that can touch us. Mm. Hey, hey, look at that. Man, Ooh. I'd sure like to see them play. Hey, the wow. Globe is even wow. big in New York, right, Nick? <laughs> right. <laughs> Only thing is, tickets cost money. Maybe if we tell them who we are, they let us in for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they might even ask us to stand up and take a bow. Ladies and gentlemen, seated in section A15 and currently riding a 10-game winning streak, the Carver High School basketball team. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I got a better idea. What if we get the coach to get us some? He could swing it if he wanted to. Yeah, well, he may not want to. Yeah, man, you know, he wasn't exactly overjoyed about us not doing his charity work. It's all in the approach. Say it, don't spray it, Thorpe. What are you talking about, Goldstein? You spit on me, Thorpe. Goldstein, when I spit on you, it'll be intentional. Hey, watch it, Thorpe, man. You did it again. You're crazy. Yeah, I just felt it, too. What? Yeah. Man. Oh, oh, get yeah. out. Lama, you gotta get your top pick. Yeah. All right. Finally, my prayers are answered. Real weather. And you told me it never rained in California. You think it's gonna hurt the roof bars? That's one All sick right. guy. Once a year it rains in LA, and it's gotta be the day after I wash my car. <laughs> First you dine, then you dash. You can't do that. We're talking about the dine and dash car. Don't leave home without it. You're not six years old grabbing a pack of gum off the shelf. Man, we're talking about hamburgers. Relax, will you? I'm relaxed. I'm not going to the big house for robbery. What are you bucking for, Eagle Scout? Man, I'm just trying to tell you the facts as I see them. Well, keep your eyes closed and your mouth shut. That's, uh, six hamburgers. Let be all, sir? Yeah, thanks. What would you like, boys? Just coffee for me. I'd like a piece of banana cream pie. I'm not 
not sure, Goldstein, but I think that pie smells bad. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. That's disgusting. I think I picked up the wrong chick. <laughs> So much for the dine and dash card. What are you doing? Browse. We do not browse with display models on our feet. What do you think about the yellow? I don't know. Uh, I think maybe if we paint a little purple on there, it might be all right. And under no circumstances do we ever allow customers to try on sneakers barefooted. Hey, mister, does this stink or what? Somebody sues you for everything you're worth. Ouch! One good pair of sneakers and the guy would have had free advertising by one of Carver's starting five. Stupid fool didn't know a good deal when he saw one. I do. Threw me out with the display models on. <laughs> well, I sort of promised Darlene that I would see her after the game. What about tomorrow night? Well, I don't like to plan that far in advance. Why don't you uh, talk to me in the morning? Hey, Adam, what are you doing here? I hate junior high. Hey, Miss Buchanan, you looking good today, Mama. No, no, no. For the sake of the future generations of the Thorpe family, I'll pretend I didn't hear that, Morris. Yeah, Thorpe, you should never say, hey. You do want to die young. The bell is going to ring in less than a minute, so get to it. In a minute, Sybil. In a minute, Sybil? And who do you think you are? We're number one. Don't you read the sports pages of the Carver Gazette? You better get to class right now before I put you all on report. Hey, listen, Sybil, I mean, don't you think that after all we've done for the, the honor and the glory of Carver High in the past six weeks, we deserve a little extra consideration? You know, Morris, you have a point. And I think that little extra consideration should start with you. I mean, especially since you've been having such a good season. <laughs> I want you in my office, and I mean right now. The rest of you get to class. Enter. I hope that look on your face is from indigestion, not anything I've done. I've put Morris Thorpe on report. Now, I would have put the whole team on report, but I'm hoping an example will suffice. What have they done this time? No, it's not a this time. It's all the time. Now, they walk around the school like they own the place. 
They are crude, they defy authority, and they strut down the halls like, like the world should get out of their way. I know. And if you don't do something about it, I will. All right, I'll try and think of something. Uh, don't try. Do it. What's all this? Hey, hey, check it out. Me and Cool been practicing. Watch. You ready? Hey! Oh. Hey, good. Very good. Oh, you make me nervous. I'm gonna make you a lot more than that. You guys have a tough enough time handling fundamentals. I trust uh, everyone had a pleasant weekend. Everybody slept well, knowing that you've all become so important by now that you no longer have to take time to help out the community. Well, trust me, I'm not gonna forget. Oh, there go the Globe try to ticket. Now, before we get down to work, I want to talk with you guys about something. I've been getting reports that I don't like. Just because you guys are on a winning streak right now, you all think you're hot stuff. Winning streaks end. They don't go on forever. This one just might. Take my word for it, Coolidge. They don't. Hey, man, ain't you forgetting the 10 straight put together by the car of a 12? No, I haven't forgotten that, Jackson. I also haven't forgotten that we got a game tomorrow. We got more holes in our defense than the Watergate tapes. Game? You call playing Pimlico a game? <laughs> yeah. We can't take a school seriously named after a racetrack. And his horse is real lame. Yeah, they're ready for the blue factory. One in 13, coach. That's a pits. Yeah, maybe we should shoot him. Put him out of their misery. Yeah. What do you want us to do? I mean, coach, they're dead last. Oh, dead last, huh? Does that have uh, sort of a familiar ring for anybody? And why should it? Why should it, Thorpe? Because that's exactly the spot where you guys were parked for most of last year. Now, we surprised a couple of teams who were right on top. This team could do the same thing to us tomorrow. Oh, come on. That's not the same thing. Because none of those teams had what we got. Superstars up and down the line. Ain't no team nowhere gonna beat us, no how. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, there's a difference between winning and being winners. They're two different, separate things. Winners have something that you guys haven't shown lately. And what's that? A little class, Reese. A little class. All right. I want two lanes for a passing drill. Let's go. Uh, coach. Me and the guys were wondering, uh... Since you got so much pull and all, and since uh, we ain't got no money, being as uh, underprivileged as we are, that maybe you could swing some freebies for the Globetrotters at the Dome. You guys want free tickets? Yeah. You know, you guys got a lot of gall. I got some news for you, Thorpe. I had those tickets for you. Yeah, I was going to surprise you after you helped me out at the car wash. But there was no show, so there's no tickets. Hey, wait a minute, man. What do you mean? What you gonna do with them? I'm uh, gonna give them to whoever I can find. You mean you'd rather take somebody else to see the Globe Trotters besides us? Ah, come on, coach. You ain't got 12 friends. Give us the tickets. Right now, I'd rather take the girls' basketball team than you guys. Me too. Hey, coach, don't let that get out. They may take you up on it. I want two lanes passing drill. Let's go. Jeez, this is the only place in school where emphysema comes with the room. I might as well be outside. Hey, come on, you guys. You may find this hard to believe, but I actually have to go to the bathroom. Got to use a coal miner's hat just to find the mirror. I got to fix my contact lens. What I steal this? Hey, come on, nature's calling. No answer. I ate a lot of garlic last night, and it's starting to back up on me. Come on. What are you doing? You see, it's a very simple procedure. You just rinse it off and pop it back in. I don't know, man. Can't be healthy putting glass in your eye. <laughs> Look who's here. Two more Reeves' munchkins. The Snow White let all the dwarfs out to play today. 
Who is this guy? Rocky Broder. No doubt, headed for valedictorian. Woo! Woo! Please, somebody open a window. My eyes are getting watery in here. You're soft, man. It's only tar and nicotine in here. In New York, they nail the window shut. Watch the eye. Stop, hold it right now. Stay back. I lost my contact lens. You gotta help me find it. I can't believe it. I think I found it. Think that's funny, huh, stupid? <laughs> yeah. Hey, forget it, Salami. You're right. It ain't worth the effort. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna hit you and you gonna fall on the floor. Hey, man. You don't want to get in no trouble. I mean, fighting ain't gonna solve nothing. It'll make me feel better to teach this jerk here a lesson. Hey, what's going on here, man? Go ahead, pal. Make the move. Come on. Hey, Salami, enough with the dialogue. Already. Put this guy away so we can get out of here, huh? Before. What is that? They use that word out here. What are you, some kind of barbarian? <sighs> Try to tell you, man. Shooting, no nothing. Just work the ball around and we'll walk out of here with a well deserved duck. Sit on it, man. We still got time to do our stuff. Look, Coolidge, doing your thing doesn't mean rubbing their noses in, all right? A 25 point win is quite enough. I don't want to embarrass these guys. Fans came to see a show, not a game of keep away. Just get out there, enjoy yourselves, have a good time, and don't run the score up, all right? Okay, let's go. All right, come on. Hi. Hey, I figured we'd start off slowly, you know? Half time 
the Lakers game to maybe a warm-up skit in Reno before doing Caesar's Palace, Las Vegas? Let's see, uh, 10,000 people, what, five, six bucks a head, few hundred out for bodyguards, and, uh, bodyguards? Are you crazy? Those creeps will keep the ladies away. And did you dig that crowd? Woo-hoo! And did you dig the way Nancy Napolo was staring at me? She gave me a 10 out of the sand after me. <laughs> yeah, after the day, man, I think the ball wins when it's about ready to fall. Yeah, you take the one in the red v and I'll take the one in the itsy bitsy jeans. Uh, no, 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 no. I'll take the one in the itsy bitsy jeans, and then I'll take the one in the red v Let's get Witherspoon down here and make sure we're written up in the Sentinel right. There's no hell. Somebody putting the call to Sports Illustrated. <laughs> <laughs> All the way to Broadway. All right. <laughs> I have never, ever, in 15 years of coaching, come across a more disgusting display of bad sportsmanship than I did out there today. <laughs> Nate, first, thanks again for helping out at the car wash. And second, thanks for the cops. You guys put on another great show. Yeah. Uh, look, I know this may sound crazy, but I was wondering if you guys would help me teach my carver players a lesson. Well, I was thinking maybe a little scrimmage between the shine bright car wash staff and my team tomorrow afternoon. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, great. See you then. They can't wait. Nate says after the way those kids treated them at the car wash, they figured they owe them one, so we're all set for tomorrow. I don't know, Ken. Do you think this is really fair? My ears must be clogged. I didn't really hear that, did I? Well, I have a feeling this kind of public humiliation may be detrimental to the best interests of Carver. Relax, will you, Sybil? We'll raise money for the student organization, besides giving great satisfaction to a lot of people who suffered enough abuse at the hands of my team. Okay? You trust me? I promise you it'll be a very educational experience, believe me. You're gonna be there, aren't you? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Now, wasn't that a wonderful choice of color and style? Now, for the final selection in our line of winter apparel, the model, Warren Coolidge. The clothes, the piece de resistance from his own original inner city fashions. Warren, if you please. for any sporting event. Just the right new look for the coach on the go. Don't you agree? Salami. Uh, Coolidge. That's a nice clown suit. I didn't know the circus was in town. A uh, clown suit? Coach, this happens to be the new addition to our winning image. Yeah, since we're playing good, we might as well start looking good. Hey, how about some new warm-up? With some nicknames on the back. You know, CJ, Cool, Dopey, Sneezy. Hey, we at least deserve game programs with uh, action-packed photos of the unbeatable Carver squad rolling Ooh. to another victory. No problem, that's so I'll just go down to the local police station and pick up a set of mug shots. Now, Coach, don't be so hostile. Now, it's obvious by now that uh, I have lost control of you animals. That is, for the time being. You ran up the score against Pimlico against my direct orders. So since I can't teach any basketball basics to you know-it-alls, I'm going to have to resort to discipline. Today's practice will be 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, 50 laps what? right now. Hey, I can't do none of that stuff. Why not, Coolidge? Hey, because if I do that, I'll perspire. And if I perspire, I'll mess up my new uniform. Don't worry about it, Coolidge. Perspiring is for little girls in private school. What you're here to do is sweat. Right now, hit the floor, let's go. <laughs> punished for winning. Uh, yeah, coach. We haven't forgotten about defeat. Glad to hear that, Gomez. Can you get us some new sneakers? That's 75 sit-ups for you. Hey, coach, in case you slipped your mind, we are the ones that made you what you are today. 
What, if I may ask, is that Thorpe? The hottest coach in high school basketball. <laughs> if looks could kill Thorpe, they'd be measuring you for a black suit. You know, I never thought I'd say this, but it'll be a true pleasure to see you guys lose again. Yeah, well, forget it, coach. There isn't a team in L.A. who can't blow off the court. Contrary to public opinion, you're not that good. Oh, no? I could bring in a team of old men off the street that can take you guys to the cleaners. Uh, name the place and the time, Coach. We'll be there. Tomorrow afternoon, here. Be in uniform. Four o'clock. What? Hey, look what we have here. Refugees from the car wash. Ready for a lesson in round ball, fellas? Yeah, are you guys sure you can handle it? Uh, somebody better make sure there's some oxygen courtside. And an ambulance. I'm gonna give you a break, blood. My first shot's gonna be a fallaway jumper, and you know where it's gonna end up. In your face. <laughs>
life seem enough. I'm gonna go pull the plug on some very sick patients. I'm getting the hell out of here. Turn out the lights. Where did everybody go? <laughs> <laughs> What's all this anyway? After the beating y'all took, you can get your own towels from now on. We're number one, huh? You girls had enough yet? I don't care what you say, Coach. I'm not going out there again. Oh, what's the matter, Warren? You frightened by a group of old car washers? Oh, those guys are more than just car washers, Coach. The best basketball team I've ever seen. Yeah, they sure made you guys look bad. Guess after what we did to Pimlico, we sort of had it coming, huh? You know, there's an old saying, you can't judge a book by its cover. And that, animals, is the lesson for today. We're a good team that's gone astray. If we start to show a little humility and a lot less arrogance, I think we can go a long way this year. We're all on the same team in the game of life. End of sermon. Hey, who were those guys anyway, Coach? Why don't you go out there for the second half and find out? If you're brave enough.
You think they're an old married couple or something? It's been five months and uh, three days. Your test result's positive. You've got a case of primary syphilis. Which means chances are that I gave it to you. Warren. What's been with you the last couple of days? What do you mean? I don't know. You've just been acting funny and pulling back. Give it over. Okay, all right, you got it? Hit him for crying out loud. Hey, whoa, hey, hey man, this what do you think you're doing? What? Listen, I just thought I'd come down and give you the good news. See, a cousin of mine just transferred in from New York, you know? And, uh, see, since he's almost as great an athlete as me, I figured I'd give you first crack at trying to recruit him. First crack? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wrestling, indoor track, gymnastics, they're all gonna be after him. See, my mother and his father related, so he gets a lot of my genes. <laughs> you ever play organized ball before? <laughs> he was only the star of PS32 in Brooklyn, that's all. <laughs> Well, so what's he doing out here, then? Well, it was kind of a mutual agreement. Between who? Oh, him and his mother. Uh, and the school board. And the cops. Forget it, Salami. Oh, come on, coach! You're gonna make a terrific wrestler. He's just had a little attitude problem, that's all. But it's cleared up now, and he's raring to go. You know, he'll fit in perfect with the rest of us. That's exactly what he's not going to do. Salami, face it. You've got to really go some to get kicked out of New York. It wasn't him. It was them. He was railroaded. He's straightened out now, lost his attitude, and wants to play ball bad, real bad. All right, all right. You give me indigestion. You bring him around sometime, and uh, I'll talk with him. Now, that's the school spirit. Coach, the guy's a real piece of cake. Thanks. Nick Vitale, meet your coach. This is the guy I was telling you about, coach. A real find. What do you say, Nick? I've heard a lot about you. OK. How do you like California? I hate it. Oh, yeah? What does it come again, though? I don't know. Just calm you down in the evening, mm -hmm. you know, so you can relax, get a good night's sleep. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. I want you to try a little bit of this and tell me if you like it. Well, good afternoon. Well, seeing as it's payday and all. I'm glad you weren't here earlier. You missed all the excitement. One of Carver's lively classes chased out a substitute health teacher. Are you sure it wasn't because of this stuff? Oh, by the way, uh, you busy next period? Depends on why you're asking. Somebody needs a cover for Moore's, uh, Sex education class. Ah, now, wait a minute. I thought we got that all decided. I take it twice a month, Moore takes it twice a month. Look at it as a stepping stone to uh, bigger and better things. <laughs> Judging from the outline, today's lesson should be a stop for a better sex teacher like yourself. I knew we should have eaten with his English department. Yeah, but over here, you get a little love, a little companionship, and a little health. I'll take the quiet myself. <laughs> so what'd you think of the game yesterday? What I always think is you were beautiful. Yeah, but we should have blown him out, and we did. Practice on the something else there. Oh, 
Aw, you just get them all by yourself next time, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Say, what's happening, guys? And the coach is really gonna stick it to us today. Well, it ain't like we don't deserve it the way we play. Yeah, man, I really wanted to blow them boys out, too. Me, too. Oh, yeah, Goldstein, you really had them shaking in their boots, man, when you were sitting on the bench with your legs crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man, if I run into that dude with the pointed elbows, I got a telegram for that sucker. You and me both, man. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be combing the stands for the same model he's got. They think they're an old married couple or something. Yeah, like uh, they've been going together for years. <laughs> it's been five months and uh, three days. With more to come. Aw. <laughs> See you after practice, baby. Excuse me, Coolidge, how did you get somebody who looks like that to go out with somebody who looks like you? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a hunk. Yeah, a big hunk of... Uh, I was just joking. Wait, <laughs> cool, cool. You really serious about it, right? Yeah, that's the monster I've been with anybody. Looks like Mr. Morris is gonna be late. Uh, yeah. 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 Come on, let's go down. Hey, they're gonna play some ball. Hey, hey come on, little animals, you heard the bell, let's go. Aha, uh -huh. we're just waiting for our teacher. Coach. Yeah, he's yeah. late, it's a carpet to this year. Well, why don't you crawl in there, because he has arrived. Uh, oh, yeah, where? Oh, no, I don't see no teacher. Yeah, Reese, we're hot. You? That's what we want. No! Eat the hot sauce. That's all the last guys, and I'm gonna gotta tell you. Stop with each other for the next 45 minutes. So what do you say we make the most of it? Yeah. <laughs> now, according to this, the topic for today is something all you guys should know about. Sexually transmitted diseases. Oh, wow. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Except for the common cold, more persons over the age of 14 contract sexually transmitted diseases than all other communicable diseases combined. All right? Now, that's over 36,000 people a day in this country alone. Now, today, we're going to concentrate on the two most commonly reported communicable diseases. Gonorrhea and syphilis. Now, both of these are caused by tiny organisms which pass from person to person during sexual relations. Uh, then Goldstein, you got nothing to worry about. <laughs> As a matter of fact, one out of every five high school students in this state will contract venereal disease of one form or another before they graduate. So they're gonna make it a requirement? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you guys better know what signs to look for. Coach, is sex the only way you can contact VD? All right, now that's a good question. People used to think that uh, you could get it in public toilets, uh, drinking fountains, uh, even a doorknob. Yeah, all right, all right. But this is the truth. It can only be passed through sexual contact with an infected person. Now, how do you know if you have it? Well, sometimes this isn't so easy, because in women, there can be no signs, or the signs can be so minor that they're hardly noticeable. And in men, it can be a tiny sore in the area of contact, which occurs any time during a six-month period. Um, how many times do you have to be with somebody before you get it or give it? Majority of times, just once. <laughs> so, uh, you from New York, huh? You play ball there? Yeah, among other things. The Big Apple, man. That's where it's happening. All oh, right, New York. Look, man, things move pretty quick out here, too, you know. This town ain't nothing but a tomato patch. <laughs> oh. Hey, man, you can't kick about the weather. Yeah? If you're a camel. Listen, 
The only reason this town hasn't sunk into the ocean already is because there's enough New Yorkers out here to keep this town running half right. Say, man, what kind of drug are you on, anyway? Have you dug the ladies out here yet? The nice one's been imported, just like everything else around here. New York-style pizza, New York sirloin, even the Dodgers, man. This town's got a heavy dose of inferiority complex. Salami, you sure this guy's kin to you? Let me tell you something, man. If you're so hot on New York, they got planes and trains and buses running every day. Man, if I could, I would. And Nick. Go, let's go. a trademark of mine, you know? Yeah, well, don't get carried away with yourself yet, all right? Hey, does that mean he's on the team? Yeah, that's what that means. That is, if uh, New York doesn't mind. All right! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. Each of you guards better stay on your toes, huh? Nice day. Oh. Oh, sure. Nah, it ain't a guard's job that I'm bucking for. No? No, man. I'm bucking for yours. Oh, oh. Nick. Please. Hi, babe. This practice is tough as you thought. The other man would have made a great Marine. <laughs> what does he do to you? Hey, don't ask, man. Don't even ask. We can't on hard on Thorpey today. He's gonna come down on you the same way. You miss another two-foot stuff like you did today. Hey, well, you keep your voodoo away from me here. So, uh, where do y'all want to go? Let's hit it up, man. Burger Castle. What do you say? Oh, hey, hey. Let's roll. Can't move around like that. Say, Thorpey, it's only practice, man. We're taking home with you. Loosen up. You come with us, all right? No, cool. Not today, man. What's wrong? You a little short on bread? I'll cover you. Just don't eat too much. <laughs> no, man. I'm just not into it. Come on, all right. So, all right, all right. Yeah. If you change your mind, you know where we're at. Yeah. All right. Come on. Let's get it. Get in the car. 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 I'm taking you guys in. Get off the roof. Get out of here. Uh-huh. You got something for? Him? You got a couple of minutes? He was next to me on the bench for half a scrimmage, doesn't say a word. Now he wants to talk. I got a problem. I could have told you that an hour ago. I'm serious. Well? I think I might have VD. You haven't seen a doctor about this? No. But you think something's wrong? 
The symptoms you talked about in class sounded kind of familiar. Any of the guys know of a doctor, a clinic, something like that? The guys, do you know what would happen if they found out about this man? It, it, no. it would get all over the school. There wouldn't be a girl that would get within 10 feet of me. Oh, will you relax? Take it easy. Nobody's going to find out anything, all right? But why don't you sit down? All right. Now, the first thing you got to do is get to a doctor. We'll let him determine if there's something wrong. Look, I already told you I know what's wrong. Now, you mind if we get a second opinion? Doctors cost money. No, no. Thorpe, there are all kinds of free clinics around with first-rate medical attention, and it'll all be anonymous. Look, I'll look it up. You know where you caught this? Yeah, and I'll talk to him. Look, have you had any, uh, you know, sexual activity since then? Yeah. Do they know? No. Okay. First thing tomorrow, you go down to this clinic. And if need be, they'll help you get in touch with anybody that you uh, need to contact. Don't worry, will you, Thorpe? I'm going to ask you a few questions. I'll take a couple of tests. Who knows? They may treat you right on the spot if they find something wrong. Okay? Uh, oh, at the risk of sounding preachy, you know, for better or worse, uh, casual sex has become almost a way of life in this country. And along with it comes a certain amount of responsibility, don't you think? Physical, but also emotional. Just hope you keep that in mind. It ain't preachy. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. it. Happens to the best of us. No, but I need the form. It has to be have... Look, if you don't have time to wait with everybody in, in line, then you just have to make another appointment. Sam, 45 minutes. I told you, if you can't wait, you'll just have to make another appointment. Can I speak to the doctor? The doctor's just going to tell you the same thing I told you. All right. Look. I just want to tell you that I think you're being systematically destroyed by the very same rules and regulations that you worship. Hi. Hi. Can I help you? I'd like to see the doctor. Name? Morris. Mr. Morris? Yeah. First name initial? T. T. Tim? <laughs> yeah, how'd you know? You look like a Tim to me. Now, what would you like to see the doctor about? Just a checkup. Mm, we don't really do checkups. Do you have a specific medical problem? Well, yeah, sort of. I'm really only good at guessing names, not medical problems. Um, I'd like to... I'd like to take a VD test. Okay. Why don't you just fill this out, have a seat, and someone will be with you shortly. Thank you. Right this way to examination room three. Nice. Yeah, she cost me $45 in 1962. Tim Morris? Cost over 100 to get her today. Too bad you can't sell her. Tim Morris! You know, son, I see them on guys that cost 100, 150. They couldn't hold a candle there. <laughs> 
Mr. Morris. Oh, yeah, right. You can go in and take your test now, Mr. Morris. Thank you. Now, look, will you remove your pants so I can examine you, please? Well, listen, it's really not all that urgent. Maybe I can come back some other day. Drop them. Um... Not till you can show me a draft card. What do you think you are? Some kind of special case or something? The most special case. And I ain't budging until I can see a doctor. A good old gray-haired doc. Oh, so you want the doctor, huh? You've got the doctor. Good. I'm Dr. Chatham. I understand you've got a modesty problem. Tim? Yeah? Well, I'm glad you came in when you did. Your test result's positive. Which means? You've got a case of primary syphilis. Relax, relax. Fortunately, we've caught it early enough, so there won't be any permanent damage to you. Permanent? Well, it's imperative that venereal disease is caught in its early stages. Otherwise, the consequences can be severe. We'll give you an injection now, then get you in here in a week for a follow-up treatment. Now, you'll have to abstain from any sexual activity until we're sure you're completely cured. And then you should be as good as new. That's it? That's it. Do you have any idea where you contracted it? Yeah. Well? It's just a girl. I talked to her already. Any sexual contact since then? Yeah. One. Have you talked to her yet? No. She should be tested immediately. I know it. Tim, are you aware of what can happen if syphilis goes untreated? I'll tell her. It can attack any part of the human body, especially the vital organs, the liver, the heart, the brain. It can even infect an unborn child, and eventually it can cause sterility, blindness, paralysis. All right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll tell her. I'll, I'll call her right away. So what's so important? It couldn't wait till tomorrow. PD. What? I got PD. You? How? <laughs> Take a big guess. I mean, from who? Doesn't matter from who. What matters is the fact that I was with her before I was with you. Four. Which means chances are that I gave it to you. Which means... Warren. Warren. Oh, no. Look, Diana. I should have known that someone like you would be carrying around something like that. Hey, come here, listen to me. Don't, don't touch me. Okay?
Look, the fact that I got it or that you got it is not the problem. The fact that Warren might is. Now, what we've got to do is we've got to tell him something. We can't tell him what happened. I'm not talking about the truth. Now, we got to come up with something, a story. No. Not we, Morris Thor. You. You got to come up with something. This whole damn thing is your fault, and you got to fix it. <laughs> but what about Coolidge? I couldn't face Warren if I had to tell him that I... I can't. Took two to tango. Can't. Thorpe, what the... Uh, Coach, I'm sorry to bother you, Coach. I hope I didn't wake you. No, no, you didn't wake me. What do you want? I gotta talk to you. Look, uh, it's almost uh, 10 o'clock. Can't you come back? Uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow or something. If it could, I wouldn't be here. Ken? I'm sorry. <laughs> really, I am. No, no, it's, uh, it's okay. Come on in. You sure? Yeah. Uh, Jenny, this is Morris Thorpe. Morris wants to talk for a minute. I hope I'm not cramping anybody's style. Oh, oh, uh, no, no, you're not. Uh, I'll just, uh... hey, it'll give me a chance to read these old press clippings I've heard so much about. Sit down. What is the problem? Yeah. Um, everything I've been talking to you about the last few days. The, the VD thing? Yeah. Well, those other people involved, they're not just anybody. They're Coolidge and Diane. It just happened, that's all. When I told her about the VD thing, man, she just flipped out. Said she didn't want to have anything to do with telling Coolidge. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Warren, we're not supposed to be here. Come on, study hall's a drag. They ain't gonna miss us. Besides, we can get all the studying done we need down here. Warren! No. What's been with you the last couple of days? What do you mean? I don't know, you've just been acting. Funny and pulling back. Warren, you know how you always say that you'll stay with me as long as I want you to? Do you really mean that? Of course I do. Through thick and thin? Come on, what is this? Warren, I. I have... I have to go. Diana. No telling what else is up. How you doing? Come to get out of my house. Coolidge, cover up. Hey, cool. You clear of me. I got one cheese sandwich and that's it. I ain't hungry. What's the matter? You sick or something? Yeah, you can say that. Diana's been giving me a cold shoulder lately. But you guys had something strong going, bro. Man, she put me off real hard last night and then just dusted me off in the gym last period. So maybe she's sick. She ain't sick. Man, no hugs, no hello buttercup, nothing. Just high-born and keeps on walking. 
Well, that sure don't sound like Diana. Mm -mm. I can't figure it. Everything was real cool, and then all of a sudden, it's like I got the plague or something. I don't know, blood. Could be another dude in the picture. She don't spend no time with nobody except me. A lady's a fox, cool. A lot of guys, even older guys, wouldn't mind holding her hand. Yeah, well, I got news for dudes older or otherwise. They better be twice my size and three times rougher. Because I'll go off. Man, women. This one area took me a long time to get a handle on. Lying anyway. I went down to the clinic. He gave it to me, all right. Have you talked to Warren yet? No. Well, are you gonna? I don't know. You don't know? What are you telling me? That I have to play hide and seek with Warren for the rest of my life? I don't know what I want to tell him yet. I can only avoid Warren for so long before I lose him. Listen, I got a stake in this thing, too. Then tell him something. Hey. OK, I'll bite. What's the wild and crazy mood about? Nothing. Thorpe. You talked to Coolidge yet? No. No? Well, do you intend to, or was that little talk of ours the other night just voice exercise? I'll talk to him. Today. talk to somebody about, only I can't talk to the other guys. What is it? This guy. This other guy that Coolidge is worried about with his girl. He's not just some other guy. You know the guy? <laughs> Coolidge broke things off with her a while back for about a week. Said he wanted to do some other kinds of bird watching, whatever. Anyway, there was this party that I was at and that Diana was at. And we got to talking and uh, dancing. And then we left the place together. Nah, you didn't. I did. Man, what were you thinking about? I mean, there's bad moves to make, and then there's bad moves to make. I know, I, I know. That ain't, that ain't the half of it. Seems as though I, I was carrying a dose of VD at the time. Jeez. Which means she got it, which means Coolidge got it. She know, but he don't. So what's she gonna do about it? Oh, she's just staying away from cool till I come up with something. Yeah. Man, the big guy's gonna hand you your head. Unless you just don't tell him about it. Oh, yeah, right, man. And then we all just sit back and we watch his brains rot out. I got to tell him. Somehow or another, he's got to know. Suppose... Suppose you just let him come down with it all by himself. 
Oh, come on, man. He's already come down with it. Yeah. I know that, and you know that, but he don't. Is this town at least large enough to support a few ladies of the night? Come on, man. I'm tired, man. I could be home relaxing by the pool. Oh, yeah, right. Hey, listen, man, I'm telling you, this thing was made for you. Reddish purple felt with a brim that's got to be six inches long. And on a price tag, you need sunglasses to read. Now, man, this is another block or two, all right? You said that a mile ago. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, you know what, man? Ever since you stopped making time with Diana, man, you get cranked. What's it been, two, three weeks already? One. It ain't good to keep an edge on like that, cool? Get out of here. Hey, man, I'm serious. You're a grown boy. It ain't healthy. Man, don't worry about me, shorty, because I don't see you burning up any hearts lately. Oh, hey, man, you know what? You got a point there. See that? It's nerves, man. Ain't no good for you. What is this, a jackhammer? <laughs> Oh, man, lack of natural outlets. It'll get you every time. You need help, brother. Well, that charming street there is where we're gonna get it. Oh, man, that's a red light just... Precisely. Listen, man, we're pals. I'm your pal. Pals do for pals. Listen, listen, hey. I'll even front you the bread. Oh, I don't know. Come on, man, this is Hollywood. Live it up. You're still young. I mean, you know, come on. Please, please. Hey, listen, oh, listen, man. All right. You've been as tense as me, right? Believe me, it'll mellow us both out. I'm sitting right. I mean, I can't see going out for a hamburger on a sirloin steak that I care about. <laughs> yeah. Hey, cool. Um, there's something I, I, I got to talk with you about. I got VD. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, man, I try to warn you about messing with Kathy Strachan, man. The chick is bad news. <laughs> Yeah. You got it, too. What you mean I got it, too? What makes you say something crazy like that? Because we've been with the same lady. What you mean we've been with the same lady? I haven't touched no one but Diana five months. So what do you tell? Yeah, I want to do it, too. Stay out. Do it. So what's happening, Coolidge? What was wrong with him? When you're older, Emma, when you're a lot older. Warren? 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 Hi, baby. How are you? Why didn't you call me last night? What happened? I went to the clinic this morning. him the truth and you didn't even take the time to tell me about it? I hate you, Morris Thorpe. You wrecked everything and I never want to see your disgusting face again as long as I live.
in the hell with you. Walking through it. I just wanted to explain it. I'm only gonna tell it to you once. If you know what's good for you, you'll stay clear. Listen, man, I didn't know that. I'm only gonna tell it to you once. Okay, you animals over here. Time for some group therapy. Uh, because of a certain masochistic streak in me, I want to talk with you once again about last Wednesday's fiasco. We lost that game because we failed to get this ball to the open man. Hey, I was passing off. Uh, right, Gomez, like that one to the balding guy in the third row. <laughs> I don't see anything funny about losing, and therefore we are going to work today again and again and again until I see you guys growing eyes in the sides of your head. Now, Skins today are the guys who hustled in the last game, which means Baker, you know who you are, Reese, Haywood, Salami, and Gomez. Salami, you're bringing the ball up. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, come on. On defense, we got Coolidge, Stop, Jackson, Goldstein, and Vitalia. Let's move it. Got to go, He won't even throw me a pass, much less sit down and listen to something. Look, you're both gonna have to find some sort of crash course in public relations, because you two have got to reach some sort of understanding about this. Forget it. Coolidge won't even... Look, Thorpe, you and Coolidge have been friends for a long time. A real bond is formed between you two. Now, it's been shaken up a little bit, but it hasn't been broken, at least not irreparably, not yet. So don't let it happen. Don't kid yourself. It's been busted to smithereens. OK. If you're not even going to try to square things up with him, I suggest one of the two of you look for a new basketball team. And Thorpe, he's a lot taller. Tell me you left the gym. I was hoping maybe we could talk. Or at least you would listen. I've already heard plenty. I'm crazy about you, baby. Just what kind of chump you playing me for? D, 
didn't mean anything, my being with Mars. Nothing. It was just like we were shaking hands. Yeah, that's right. Just a good old slap on the back, that's all. Uh -huh. I suppose you were shaking hands with Hayward, too, the night you and him picked up the drinks at Salami's party. You didn't get back till it was half over. And neither did Gomez or Jackson, because they were with us. Yeah, well, what about you and Charles Oliver when you said you were studying algebra together? Did he show you a new handshake? We were in the library. That doesn't bother him, and a bus doesn't bother him. You're wrong, Warren. You tell it to Thorpe. Will you listen to me? The week you broke things up between us, you hurt me so bad, I was going crazy. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't believe that you didn't want to be with me anymore. You know how I feel about you, Warren. I mean, you really hurt me. Yeah, maybe so, Diana, but you and Thorpe, I mean, you're putting devils in my head. I don't know what to think. I just wanted you to, to feel the way that I felt. Josh Brand threw a party that Friday night. So I went after your best friend. Stop it. I went after him. He'd sit, I'd sit. He'd walk, I'd walk. And when he left, I left, too. I wouldn't have never done that to you. 20 minutes later, I felt like killing myself. So did Morris. We didn't say one word to each other. We just felt ashamed. I made a mistake, Warren. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. You're the only one for me, Warren, forever and ever. You're the only one. Please.